Senator Ferdinand. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I rise to make a couple of observations mm -hmm. um, regarding this bill. I was very heartened with some of what the Minister for National Security pointed out that may change regarding the, this bill. And I think uh, quite a few of these issues have been issues that have confronted us at different sectors, particularly at the, um, in, in the schools. And as you know, most of the time when I speak in the House, I always um, highlight issues that relate to our education system. We do have an Education Act, and many times we find that there are certain areas that may appear to conflict what is either in the criminal code or um, in some of our other laws. And one such example um, is in relation to the age of consent and, the, and what you can actually do in schools. For example, a child who, or, or a young person, because you also have the definition of a child and the definition of a young person, and all of that, um, all of that is, you know, is, is beginning to, to raise questions. We have youth, we have young person, and we have child. So um, I think that type of legislation will assist in helping us as a country uh, clarify those differences and set out clear procedures and laws to guide our practice. Uh, you have children who are in school, or young persons who are in school, but have attained the age of 18. And they may, they may have done so because of the fact that they were born early in the year, and they may have written common entrance, mm -hmm. say, at, at 13. And they are in Form 5, but they are 18. And based on our laws, they are adults. Um, for, if you may, for example, have a case where you need parental intervention, a child may decide not to come to school, or a child, or in that case, not a child, the student may decide um, that they want access to their results. And the school may see or may have certain you know, requirements. And parents may not be able to access or to view the results of an 18-year-old because you're an adult, yet you are under someone's roof and you go to school. The issue of sexual con um, co consent we have cases where the schools have been faced with reports about, um, from parents, from students, from the counselors, about cases of um, you know, sexual impropriety or sexual misconduct or violation of children. And when you face the Department of Human Relations, uh, mm -hmm. you, you, your, your hands are tied because when it comes to the criminal code and the other laws, while the child is at school, but the child is 16, um, the, child is the child is considered under 18 and not an adult, he doesn't have an NIC number, cannot make certain decisions, cannot vote, cannot work. Um, but, I mean, the, how much sense does it make that you can't do all those things, but you can consent to, to a sexual relationship? And so some of the implications of this type of legislation can go well in terms of the way we we synchronize our laws and allow for the, the justice system to work. Because many times you, you, you have situations where um, you, you want to help a, a, a family, you want to release, relieve a child or a young person um, from a situation, but because of the conflicting laws and the conflicts that exist in the, re the legislation, your hands are tied. Um, so I believe that uh, it will help I can see how th this type of legislation, it may at, um, in, at a later stage require some reviewing because there still is, um, you know, there still is room for that. But critical to note is the issue of um, the consent, sexual relations consent being moved from um, 16 to 18. I think if you're an adult, you're an adult. And if you have the authority to do adult things, you should be able to do everything that adults can do when you're an adult. And the, the, the definition of an adult um, has to have some legal background or backing. You can't, you can't be an adult in one context and, be, and, and not be an adult in a different context. If you're an adult, you're an adult. I also think it will guide our, our businesses as well in terms of employment. We have issues where people have actually challenged child labor 
because of the age of children or young people who are at work. Um, so Arthur Lewis is a case in point where um, students who are part of some of the departments have turned 18 and, and they are, you know, they're having difficulties dealing with some of the, um, the issues that conflict with their age. So this type of legislation is enlightening, enlightening and, and, and also heartening. So as we, we pass this, um, I hope that we will continue to examine other laws that relate to children. Um, the, the same uh, document that the minister referred to, the Convention on the Rights of the Child, there is a section, um, Article 29, that specifically refers to certain procedures and practices, rights um, that children have in um, relating to the, the education system. Um, issues that relate to non-discrimination and equity and access and so on, which I think um, we need to take very seriously. In many cases, we have had issues where children have been discriminated against, and in some cases, it's because uh, the, the laws and the, the, the guidelines are not clear, and I think this piece of legislation can help to alleviate some of those issues. So I think um, it's welcome, and I hope that as we go forward, we continue to review our laws and be consistent um, in what we do. Thank you, Madam President.